In a year of baking unbearable sunshine and little rain with tracks finding it difficult to get enough water into the shale, isn't it ironic, if I can borrow a phrase from Alanis Morissette, that Birmingham could fail to make the playoffs because other teams might not be able to get a full season in? Or is it just only in Speedway? Sleep in the corner over there, <laughs> Webby. Good evening. And Matt Buck. Good evening. And myself, G. A. Michael. Or how are you? Or what? Anything else that you want to you want to say? So, how is everybody keeping? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Training. Oh. Why you all Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't worth it. No, <laughs> But just yes. slightly behind because we had three minutes to wait. We had one of the computers crash, so all good fun. Okay, okay. Well, that's uh, welcome. Welcome to the welcome yeah. to the uh, world of internet exactly. uh, broadcasting. Um, so first thing to say is, as per normal, get your shares out there and your likes and everything because uh, you share the stream. Um, we put you in the hat for next week for one of our wonderful t-shirts. Uh, Jack says, I have a bet with a, with a mate that Michael will not be able to remember. <laughs> Are you taking it off? <laughs> I'm reading something. I won't be able to remember Drew Kemp's name again tonight. Will I win? Probably because I actually just couldn't remember it then. <laughs> so <laughs> that was a good start, wasn't it? Um, there's a few more on there. Uh, it's going up and down like a yeah. yo-yo. And must be, must be cold in there. Oh, yes. Well, I've got, I have to have my scarf on after last night, didn't I? Um, uh, with Tom Bacon uh, winning uh, the Golden Hammer. We'll have a chat about that. And just so that you know, uh, about quarter past eight or thereabouts, Tom yeah. Bacon uh, will be on the show live on the telephone. So that's all pretty cool. Um, yes, yeah, so we were saying, do your shares and um, you, somebody will win a t-shirt and we'll be doing that. I've about turned Matt's turn. mic on there, by the way. Okay. Was I not turned on? No, you were, Matt. Thank wasn't. you. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 uh, are you, I told you not to tell him and just leave it switched oh, yeah. off. But, you know. I'm all over the place. Yeah, we, we, we've had yeah, a bit of spotted. a nightmare getting on tonight, but uh, we're here. Yeah, yeah. We're here. So there you go. So we've got a few things to talk about. Obviously, there's the Golden Hammer, um, yep. which we'll have a chat about um, when Tom comes on. It'll be the best time, I guess. I think so. Yeah. Um, good trip down to Somerset. It was a nice trip down there, yeah. <laughs> and a nice trip back, presumably. A nice trip back very quickly as well. Yeah, so yeah. Rained off. Uh, uh, by, by a very, very local storm, because uh, within... About half a mile of the stadium, it was bone dry. Right. So I think they were just very, very unlucky, to be honest. Right. The track did look like it had been watered quite a bit when we got there, so you know, maybe if it hadn't been watered so much, they might have been able to get away with it, but it really did come down about 10 yeah. minutes before well, you, don't, you, you can't legislate for that sort of flash. Absolutely, yeah. So. It was a... Yeah, it was, an, it was a nice trip down there, a lovely part of the country. I always enjoy going down to Somerset, but... Uh, of course, I went down to see some racing and didn't see any. And so. you went down to see some rain instead. Yeah, yeah. I did. So <laughs> I could have stayed here and done that. So. <laughs> um, is is that all? To, no, that's uh, that was August the seventh. Now we're looking at looking at uh, stuff on the shout box, and it's old stuff at the moment. So that's cool. Old news. Old news. So yeah, uh, just get yourself um, if you want to join in. Um, there are lots of ways that you can do that. Are they not Webby? Well, there's a couple of ways, actually. Um, if you want to join in, join in as you're doing, most of you are doing now, on the uh, Facebook page, uh, various Facebook pages and groups. Uh, you, know, you can also go to www.srbradio.com and there's, a, there's a, a chat room there. You can also join in if you don't fancy looking at our gorgeous faces. You use the word gorgeous ill-advisedly, I think. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right, so, uh, and there was a GP over the weekend. There certainly Manila, was, yeah. Manila. Nearly wasn't a GP over the weekend. Mm, yeah, it uh, was uh, had a fair amount of rain over in Sweden, and they did well to get the meeting on, to be fair. Um, shame, really, Miller usually provides some tremendous racing. A lot of the racing was good. I think it was sort of a little bit low-key because of the rain, but uh, I don't think anybody would have predicted uh, Nicky Pedersen would ever be back on the top spot of a GP again, but uh, yeah. there he was. Uh, there was a little bit of um, handbags at dawn between mm, uh, Nicky Pedersen and Ty, Ty Waffenden. Yeah, there was. Um, I just watched it just about five minutes ago, so for the first chance I've had to look at it. Hello? Uh, Adrian Hughes is new to the programme. You want to know, hi guys, what's this programme? I'm new to this. Well, this is, well, we wonder okay, that this every is, week, yeah, don't we? Exactly. <laughs> we do wonder that every week. This is the uh, Speedway Tavern. We talk about... All things Speedway, um, with a slight bias towards Birmingham Speedway and occasionally Wolverhampton mm-hmm. Speedway. Um, and it's probably metamorphic physicist in about ten over about ten year period. Mm. So yeah, yeah, started about ten years ago. Um, yeah, have a listen, see what you think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, handbags at door. And I've watched the incident. I didn't see much in it. No, really. there wasn't really anything in it, to be honest. I think uh, possibly Ty fell into the same trap that a lot of people do in thinking that if they get shut out by Nicky, it means he's done something. Hmm. Got I got a, bit, I've got a bit over the top. But I mean, uh, I just watched the afters, and I got to be honest. It seemed to me that most of the afters was being instigated by Nicky Pedersen rather than you know Ty complaining. So I don't know. I mean, you can't tell, can't you? I don't, can't I don't you think can. the uh, intervention of one or two of the uh, hangers on no, helped. Well, never which, does been, help. which has been a problem I've always had for a, a long, long time. Is that too many people in the mm. pits who just get involved when they could be better? Well, we see that over, it, over speedway everywhere. They, they shouldn't be allowed on the track, should they? Well, no. no the I mean, I think they should. They should limit the number of people in the pits because there's there's too many people. I think not not just at Grand Prix, mm. but at other events as well. I say a lot of people at pits who are. Obviously, oh. don't don't really seem to be doing anything but just standing around, so and then getting involved when it all kicks off. Just to change the subject slightly, because we've got a couple of things on our shout box. Um, I'm guessing this has come from Mr. Buck. Possibly. Um, oh. Tomorrow night we will be affixing a small brass plaque on the wall on the stadium bar uh, to the memory of uh, Hugh Watkinson, who is the only rider to have lost his life in a crash at Perry Bar. Watkinson died after a training school accident on the 16th of November 1946. Some late news is that we have been able to trace a lady whom we believe is the granddaughter of Watkinson's brother, Eric. Okay, I presume that they're going to be there tomorrow. Didn't It didn't finish. I think he ran, ran out of words there. <laughs> well, it's Tomo. Tomo said that, that was... Oh, that was Tomo. Okay. okay, that's Tomo. Okay. okay. Thank you, Tomo, for that. Yeah, that's... Uh, Speedway family once again. Well, I should say as well, I've seen some you know, horrific news we received today of the, the death of oh, Thomas Jebrzec, a uh, yeah. former Polish champion in 2012. He was once linked to Birmingham. Uh, I think he, yeah. But he rode over here a couple of times. He rode here for Bellevue, I think, in about 2001. And he rode for Lakeside, Lakeside didn't as well. he? Yeah. It, yeah. We didn't really see the best of him when he rode in the UK, but I mean, he was Polish champion in 2012, so he clearly... Was uh, you know a, a, an exceptional talent, mm. um, but mm. yeah, real shock when I when I saw that committed suicide. Uh, as I understand, yeah, that's, it. The, that's the early indications yeah. are thirty nine. So where well, so uh, yeah. rest in peace, Thomas. We send our best wishes to your family and friends. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Speedway family. Yeah. Right. So yeah, but as you said, Nicky Pedersen won the thing. Well, it, looked yeah. on it. First but, winning three years, I think, for Nicky. So do you think the the track itself being the way it was, you know, being so wet played a part in it, and presumably it was because we know Nick is pretty quick out of the gate. Yeah, um, did that help? Do you think? Um, I think possibly. I mean, the thing is, if you look at Nicky Pedersen's performances over the season in in the league matches in Poland, he's been absolutely flying, but it just hasn't seemed to work in the uh, in the GPs. But that's got to give him quite a bit of a boost now. He's up to tenth, still, you know. You know, six mm. seven points off the off the top eight spot. But if he can if he can keep performing like that, then there's no reason why he, he's not going to be uh, in with the line of getting a getting a pick. And Ty's had his 
lead cut to 17, 17 points. 17 points, so, you know, with... Uh, I think he'd have taken 17 points to lead I think by so, this yeah. point I think the season. So. I mean, I'll, I'll, yeah. I think it'll obviously depend on how many rounds we've got because there's still some doubt about whether there's going to be an Australian GP. Right. So the schedule to be 11, but, at the, you know, it's a distinct possibility that it's going to be 10, so... That means there's going to be four more rounds to go if that's the case. With a 17 point, point lead, as long as he doesn't do anything stupid, I think he's still got more than enough to spare. Needs to, to avoid injury, basically. Needs to avoid injury, and I think he needs to maybe keep out of trouble as well, which he mm. did on, uh, which he didn't manage to, to do so in uh, in Melilla. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously another another GP. Um, Greg Hancock was very very poor. Just three points for Greg, so. Which would sort of disprove my theory. <laughs> well, that's right, yeah. I mean, he he, he was uh, highly fancied by a lot of people to do well. He usually does well in Sweden, and he's been in very good form. But uh, mm. maybe the track conditions... It's almost a home uh, meeting for him, isn't it? Well, it is. Well, I mean, that's where he's based mm. now, of course, when he's over in Europe. So, But, yeah, I think it's it's, it's still, you know, to me, Ty's in a, in a strong position. But, uh, you know, if... Uh, the likes of Freddy and, and Magic Janowski can st- and Bartis Moslik as well, who had another very good meeting, L- looked for most of it like he was going to be the winner before his exclusion in in the semi final. Mm. There, for me, they're, they're, they're the three riders for me that have got a, a realistic chance if, of uh, still catching tight at the top. Well, could get exciting, could get Absolutely, exciting. Let's yeah. hope it doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> let's hope that uh, Ty can yeah. bring home the, the trophy again. I nearly said bring home the bacon, which would be opposite, <laughs> given um, I think we're going to send Webby off to make a telephone call now. Uh, and, uh, Jack, Jack, Jack just uh, has come in with um, still a lot of class riders outside the top top eight in the GP table. There is, there is. Yeah, there is, yeah. And Vince is. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I think Mr Cook's probably, I suppose he's still got an outside chance of getting top eight, but it really... No, I think he's very mm. unlikely. He's yeah. uh, he's finding he's finding the going really tough. To be fair to Craig, he has so. improved though. To be well, yeah, I mean, he had a tremendous time at Cardiff, didn't mm. he? I mean, that mm. was a, a real boost for him, but uh, didn't do so well uh, last night no. um, on Saturday, I should say. Yeah, well, these sorts of tracks throw up. Odd. Ooh, what was that? Was, I think that was Webby's creaking. <laughs> uh, well, you get those knees sorted, knees sorted out, mate. Um, well. The in Speedway news at the moment, what we should—it's great news for Birmingham tomorrow. Full team, absolutely. It's Daniel uh, Hume back. Been up, seems like an age, isn't it? I think oh, it's well, be nearly, six nearly, weeks, nearly, isn't it? Oh, I was going to say it's almost two months, isn't mm. it? Since Birmingham since last had a strong, last had a home win. As well, well that, remember, yeah, yeah. So, that, that's. I mean, pulled it out of the bag. Have we last, won? Uh, yeah, I can't pulled remember. it out of the bag last. Uh, Last Wednesday, but by uh, by the skin of the teeth again. But that was a tremendous heat fifteen, though, wasn't it? I don't know. I wasn't there. He wasn't so there. Yeah. Well, there's, you, it, it's on the website, yeah. so if you have a look, it really was a tremendous heat fifteen. Um, Ellis Perks and um, Shane uh, James Shane's going acid hammer and tongue. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, the, the right result uh, as far as the five ones concerned, but the wrong result. Really, we should have beaten that team. Um, a couple of reasons that we didn't Tom Bacon who we'll be speaking to in a minute I'm going to mention this to him having a, not as a, a good a night as, as would be usual for him um, but he's, he's an engine had engine problems on the parade lap so yeah. uh, you know, I think it's Obviously understandable, problems, so. understandable right well talk of the devil but, right hopefully the next voice that we'll uh, hear on the radio will be uh, Tom Bacon are you there Tom? Hi, yeah, I'm here. Fantastic, clear as a bell, brilliant. It's great when the technology works. <laughs> so, um, yeah, f- uh, so first thing I need to say uh, to you, Tom, is well done, mate. Thank you very much. Um, I think it's safe to say you were a class above everybody else last night. It was at least two seconds quicker than everybody else. Uh, yeah, you know, it was um, it was a good meeting for me. It was one that I was really looking forward to. It's uh, it's a track I, I do really enjoy um, riding, and uh, actually last night it was uh, it was quite tricky early on. It was probably grippier than what they have it for the Elite League with the rain that they had had, um, which made it quite difficult, and um, some of the boys struggled with that, but uh seemed to give me a bit of an advantage early on. I guess the fact that you didn't come out until Heat 4 may, may have helped with that one then. Yeah, it was probably one of those nights where you were uh, quite happy to, to have that draw, and um but it was a slow meeting to get going with all the accidents and uh, had to work quite a long time for my first ride and then uh, wait quite a long time again for my second ride. Um, but it was uh, much nicer when we when we got into the flow of the meeting. 
yeah. Uh, and ha- how sort of soon it, within the meeting did you sort of think, right, it's going to be Heat 18 when I find out? Uh, almost when I turned up and me and Danny Ayres were two pitted together, I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we had a, sort of the side pits to, to ourselves and uh, we were both going well from the start. Um, but, you know, it's one of those meetings where with five rides, you can't really slip up. Um, you know, you don't have the semi-finals and the finals, so every ride counts. And as we got closer and closer to it, it was almost just, just trying to stay calm and, and keep picking up the wins and uh, obviously then boiled down to that one race. And surprisingly, or ironically, probably a better word, in that last race, that was probably the only race that you didn't make the gate in and had to really work hard um, down that back straight uh, to get yeah. out in front. Uh, yeah, I made some good first turns and... Um, like you say, in that one, I think Danny had a bit of a plan when he got to the corner. And uh, for a minute, I did wonder whether I was going to be seeing the fence or uh, <laughs> get past them both. But uh, thankfully, he left me just about enough room and uh, we got past. And, you know, from there, I just tried to, to ride a good line like I had done all night and, and not make a mistake. I think everybody on the terrace has had yeah. a sharp intake of breath at that point just to try and help <laughs> you get through the gap, you know. It was uh, yeah, one of those. We've got uh, some people on um, our chat box asking some questions, so I'm, okay. I'm going to roll some of them off for you. This is yep. Tomo. He's, he's asked me to ask you if you're hoping to step up into the top two leagues in 2019. And he says, which unfortunately would mean we, we don't see him, but he will always be a brummy at heart. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean... It- it's really hard to tell with Speedway. I mean, you have to wait and see what they um, what they do with the with the leagues. Um, I think there will be a bit of a, a shuffle round with what they do because um, mm-hmm. I think they'll have to be. So we have to sort of sit tight and, and see what they do. But obviously, my aim is is to progress all the time. Um, but you know, if I can keep riding for Birmingham, if they change what they do, or um, you know, if the if the leagues change, then I'd I'd always be more than happy to 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 be a Brummie. Mm-hmm. So we just have to wait and see. I think one of the things that people say about you and that I've noticed about you is you've got a tremendous work ethic. You find out things that you that you could perhaps do better and you work at them. Uh, yeah, it's kind to say, but it, it is something we try and do. And, um, you know, I sometimes maybe overanalyze things instead of just turning up and racing. And that was maybe my downfall a little bit last year when I, when I stepped up the league. Um, but yeah, we try and we try and work on things every meeting, and even if we maybe have an easier ride, we'll um, we're still trying to get quick times and and um, ride the bike properly. And I think I've been brought up, you know, learning to ride the bike properly, and and that sometimes helps when when the tracks are um, a little bit tricky, like last night. Mm-hmm. And, and I've I've got to mention this, and I've got to bring this up. Uh, obviously, last week uh, at uh, Perry Bar wasn't the best meeting that you've had. <laughs> no, it was. Um, nightmare from start to finish to put it bluntly uh i had terrible bike problems which thankfully doesn't happen to me very often um but my i just got my engine back uh off a service and unfortunately uh, i packed up on parade and uh uh, from from then on it was a a bit of a, a juggling game between bikes and trying to get things to work um but luckily i was allowed to go out after the meeting and uh we we put that right, and I I rode the same bike last night, so uh, I think it's safe to say we uh, we fixed the problem. Have you uh, come down from yesterday's win yet, or are you still bobbling? Uh, <laughs> it doesn't take long to come down from it when you have to go out and, and wash bikes and uh, <laughs> Kevlar's and, and get everything back in order, and uh, you know that's a long day's work's taken place today since last night. But uh, obviously, I've still got a smile on my face from that. You know, you you do have to to enjoy it when it goes well because mm. you put so much time and effort and hard work into it, it it'd be no good if, if you didn't enjoy the, the good moments absolutely and I've, I've got to give you a personal thanks because it was my birthday yesterday and that was the best birthday present I could have had so there you <laughs> oh, go. I'm glad I could do that then <laughs> Um, and, and let's not tell anybody how old I was. Thank you very much. Right, yeah, there is a Be- there is a Beatles song that ruins your name. Thank you very much. Uh, moving ago. on very quickly, <laughs> um, you must be uh, really happy that for the first time for we think for about six to eight weeks now we've got a full team at Birmingham tomorrow. Yeah, it's a massive relief. It's um, it has been such a such a challenge really for for everybody at the the club. When you looked at our team at the start of the year, it was. Um, 
we're so strong on on paper with with our top three and uh, with Leon uh, at reserve. And even we thought when he had come into the team, it, he'd be fine. And maybe if Lane had had to drop down to reserve, he he would have been absolutely fine when he dropped to reserve. And all of a sudden, in a matter of a couple of weeks, everything sort of fell apart. And uh, there I was stood on parade, the only one left out of the seven. So um, hasn't been easy for. For the promoters and and Lawrence, the manager, um, but they work very hard to get us on track every week. And like you say, it's uh, it's nice to have a full team with uh, some of the riders that we wanted mm. to be in it, ready to go again tomorrow. Yeah, and and I think, I mean, we shouldn't expect too much from Leon or Daniel for their first meeting back after a you know fairly lengthy. It's a good meeting week. to come back into. But that's exactly really, what I was going to say. Yeah, you know, Buxton. No disrespect to Buxton, they're not the strongest team in the division, so. Yeah, so it's, it's it's a good meeting for them to come back, I guess. Yeah, potentially. I mean, I don't think the opposition is too much of a problem for the two of them. I think it would just be um, fitness on the bike. So yeah. um, hopefully their injuries will, will stand have healed enough and they'll stand up to it. It, um, it does take a lot out of you riding the speed of a bike. And, you know, sometimes you can you can feel fit and that you're ready for it. And then you do a couple of laps and uh, things start to hurt again. But hopefully that, that won't be the case. And uh, getting Daniel back makes us a really strong top three again mm. and uh, hopefully Leon can, can find some of that form that he was showing at the start of the year when he when he was sort of beating any rider from from any team and if he can do that we'll, uh, we'll be looking good again. Yeah absolutely um, we've just got another question on our shout box, uh, Tomo wants to know who tunes your engines uh, yeah, Last year I was using Phil Crump and he went back to Australia and uh, so this year I, I bought two new engines um, from Brian Anderson in Denmark and uh, he looks after them for me now so when they're ready for a service we, we ship them back over to Denmark and uh, he, he tunes them and services them and uh, gets it back over to us. Well if last night was anything to go by he's doing a damn good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he did a better job last night than, than Wednesday so uh, we'll forgive him for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean we, we, we'll draw a, a line over that one. Um, <laughs> so Okay, so now the, obviously the question is, can we make the playoffs? And oh, I guess that's got to be the aim. Yeah, I, you know, we we shouldn't panic at all at the moment. We're, um, you know, we're still right in there. You know, mathematically, we're we're sort of in there. Um, looking at the the meetings that everybody's had, and um, you know, we're, we're a couple of points off it, and meetings in hand, and uh, you know, when when everyone's fit, there's absolutely no reason why. Um, not only can we make the playoffs, can we really put a challenge in when when we get there? I honestly believe that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it is obviously with the full team now yeah. looking better. I think also we're we're probably slightly better balanced at the reserve situation now. Would you agree? Uh yeah, it's been it's been really tricky. Obviously, when when Lane uh, unfortunately decided that was enough for the year and uh, that made it tough. Um, but I've been really impressed with with Sheldon. Mm. Uh, he hasn't he hasn't necessarily scored big big points yet, but his determination is um, is fantastic. And and if he keeps keeps on with that attitude, then then the points will come. And uh, Josh showed some you know good signs last week, and that was sort of his first obviously his first meeting for us. So he'd have been a bit nervous and get used to the track. And um, yeah, hopefully tomorrow is a meeting where where they've got a chance of picking up some important points for us. I think Sheldon um, showed his potential last week when he uh, got that point beating Taylor Hampshire, yeah. Yeah. and I think I mean I think a lot of us were, were saying that possibly what's letting him down at the moment is he's not getting out the gate uh, perhaps quite as quick as he would like. Uh, he's certainly got the speed once once he's going. Yeah, I'd agree. It's um, it's a big thing whenever you step up into the next league gate, and it's so important and. Uh, uh, for me, last year when I stepped up from the National League to the Championship, I just I couldn't believe how quick they were out the gate and how hard they were in the first turn. And then again when I did it in the Premiership. And it's just the same for, for Sheldon at the moment in the National League. And the one thing we need to do is you know, stop him worrying about his equipment and thinking that's why he's not getting out the start or uh, yeah. you know, not passing somebody. Sometimes it's just... Uh, I've been trying to drill into all the boys really just about how hard they need to be in the first turn. And if most of them can come out that second bend in front, then like you say, they've got the speed. So um, hopefully he'll he'll start making some starts and then score some points. Yeah, and it's got to give him some confidence. I would, you know, just that one point against. Yeah, Tony, definitely. Because Taylor Hampshire's not been yeah. no slouch this it's year. It's a confidence sport, speedway. So mm. you've absolutely. Day, so. 
Um, talking about confidence, you, you've always done pretty well out of the gates, but you had a few problems last year um, with referee decisions and so on. Um, that seems to have gone this year. Is that something that you've worked on? Yeah, and uh, in all honesty, it was a uh, it was a mechanical problem. I was um, I was running a, a bout drive system last year and a uh, really nice bit of kit, but unfortunately, I just couldn't stop it dragging. Um, which means that if I had the clutch lever pulled fully in as soon as I opened the throttle to to give it revs on the start line, the the bike would move forward, and there was nothing I could do to to stop that from happening. Um, which was really really challenging for me because. Every every other week, I thought I'd fix the problem, and we hadn't. And uh, it was costing, you know, it was frustrating people, but not as much as it was frustrating me. It was costing me a lot of money, and mm-hmm. it's not easy to always change these things straight away because you have a lot of money invested in them, um, and people are telling you that they fixed the problem. Um, but I went back to to normal chains this year, and uh, yeah, thankfully I put that to bed, and uh, it, it's helped my gating uh, no end really, uh, not having that worry in my head. Fantastic. We've got another uh, message, really, uh, on the shout box for you. It says, Tom, please tell Daniel no booking Broncos tomorrow. Just ride safe. <laughs> I don't think that's uh, in Daniel's nature, really, oh, to, say, to ride think, safe. So. I don't think that's any Speedway rider's nature once they put the uh, helmet on, <laughs> <That's> I think. <laughs> no, Daniel, Daniel's a really exciting rider to watch. And, uh, you know, that's when he's quick, when he gets it, gets it wound up. But, yeah, hopefully we can... Uh, keep him away from from any more injuries and uh he's such a you know a vital member of that top part of the team absolutely uh, and the same goes for everybody really yeah. um well t- tom thank you again so much for uh coming on and thank you again for yesterday it's been brilliant yeah no problem thanks for having me i look forward to seeing you on the track tomorrow and, and uh, let's have a win tomorrow yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> right, you take care. See you soon. Thank, thanks, thanks very much. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. He's just very professional. Yes, he? he is, yeah. In, so, in every, everything that he does, he's just... I think he's just, easy, to see, easy to see why he's uh, impressed Messrs. Van Stratton and Adams in the last... It wouldn't surprise so. me to see him at Wolverhampton next year. I think a lot of it depends on what the... Of course, yeah. And actually, I know yeah, what you say. That the, yeah. the, the, there's something that uh, I'm going to. I'm just going to get my copy of the Golden Hammer, the Golden Hammer won by Tom Bacon, Tom Bacon, Birmingham rider. Um, sorry, uh, Nigel Pearson had some interesting things to say in last night's program. Well, that makes what, a change. What, <laughs> sorry, so <he's>, Nigel. <laughs> and, and basically, he, he's saying that he doesn't really know what's going to happen next year vis-a-vis Cradley. Yeah, because we nobody knows what what sort of league status is going to you know be happening, and he says we don't even know whether the national league in the current format will remain next season. There's all sorts of forward planning for 2019, and that includes the possibility of clubs like Eastbourne, Kent, and Birmingham moving into a revamped second division. I really cannot see one big league featuring the Premiership and Championship clubs working out. As things stand, I don't know what next season holds i know that's not what many of you want to read but i'm giving you the facts as they are interesting hello (laughs) that didn't need saying to be fair (laughs) yeah tom bacon is just brilliant um yeah as we say very professional um yeah, where was it? Oh, yes. So yeah, Nig- Nigel Pearson. So I mean, that 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 first of all doesn't augur well for Cradley next year, does it? Well, if there's going to be more, if there is going to be a merger of the Championship and Premiership, which I think is possible, as possibility that's still on the cards, mm. then that's going to mean more meetings for Wolves at Mumma Green, and there's going to be fewer doubts for for Cradley. It's interesting that he seems to be implying that there's more chance of the likes of Eastbourne, Kent, and Birmingham moving up. To a Would move up? Well, I guess it depends on I think what, what's happy. on the table, doesn't it? To be fair to Eastbourne, I think they're quite happy in the National League. I think um, Kent, they're obviously handicapped by the fact that they've got the uh, the the eight thirty curfew, which doesn't help. It depends on what how the, the National League, yeah. because there is talk about the National League being five man teams. 
I don't think they'd be happy. I, no, no, we wouldn't, would, we would, wouldn't be happy no, with that. No, that would be a terrible move. Yeah, we wouldn't I, be in favour of that at all. Yeah, no, neither would I. But the only the only national league club I could probably see being in a position to move it would be Birmingham. Mm. I mean, let's you know, but be realistic. Bucks and Stoke aren't going to be, aren't going to be entertaining any ideas of, of moving up. <laughs> We're not even sure whether whether Stoke's entertaining any ideas of continuing on this season, are we? Yeah, um, that's right. Obviously, Bellevue Colts have already. It's, it's yeah, that, that's, yeah, 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 a yeah. double team from their um, current. Premiership uh, operation. Um, Mildenhall possibly didn't really work out for them when they last moved up into the league. No. So they didn't have that season where they didn't get a point all season. Something the, like that, yeah. In the Premier League. Yeah. They so, never did well in the, in the Premier League. They did win at Birmingham a couple of times in the Premier League years, I think, didn't they? I think they oh, might have done. Everybody yeah. wins at Birmingham at some point or yeah. It's that sort of track, isn't it? Um, I think to move into the Premier League, you've got to do well. I mean, Birmingham, if we moved into... You've got to do well. Not more. Premier League, sorry, it's the Championship we're yeah. talking about. Um, we'd have to do, you know, you've got to do well. But, yeah, I think there was some uh, questions uh, on the Facebook no, stream, was there? No, earlier, earlier questions. Um, have they we all been answered? Okay. Really. Um, so, Emma... Um, uh, lots of people coming on for the first time. All right. Uh, asking where we've been. We've been here. We've been here all the time. We won't be here next week. <laughs> we, ought to, we ought to throw that out. Um, now we're, we're having a week off next week. There you go. Um, well, I am anyway. <laughs> well, you won't be here. Yeah, yeah, Ashley yeah. did say, uh, do you think Chris Alder was a one-win wonder? I think he, I think the injuries have yeah. I think stunted that his, injury his at, talent. That injury at Coventry, I think he came back a bit too quickly mm. from that. Plus, I think he was badly affected by what happened to Darcy Ward. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, they were... Tight yeah, I mean, Chris Holder for those two, 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 th- two three year period was an outstanding rider. Mm. Maybe got a bit lucky when the year that he won it because of the, the refereeing decision that went his favour and against Nicky Pedersen in tour on that night. I might disagree with you on that, but go on. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, the, again, you know, you've, you've it's been lit. The, the, grand, the World Championships was littered, isn't it, with riders who've been good enough to win it once but not quite able to mm. do it again. I think that's what separates the, the very good World Champions from. The greats, Just, yeah, because they were able to go back and, and do it again. So, so now you, you, you've mentioned. Um, uh, we'll, we'll come on to that in a minute, Jack. Uh, that's an interesting question. You've mentioned uh, sort of multiple champions bit as, as greats. Do, yeah. Is Ty Waffenden in that? I think if he gets to three, then that does put him in the mm. in the greats. It looks like he's going certainly to get... going to be the, certainly would be the greatest British rider because no British riders won three, isn't it? Because I think no British riders won two ever. Well, Peter Craven won two. Of course he did. And yes, I think obviously yeah. Fred Williams as well, although he was Welsh. Yeah, you know, he claps as British. He so, was his British. Yeah. So he, he won two in the fifties. So, but yeah, I mean, t- t- if he can get three, who's to say he won't go on and and win any more? Well, he's not exactly. Um, old is he? Uh, so he's certainly you know, he's certain, still got certainly a, he's by, still got two or three years on yeah. him left at the top. So or maybe even slightly well, longer than that. So if you listen to if you look at Greg Hancock, a lot longer than that. But um, will JD need a pick? I think he will need a pick, but I think he'll get one. Okay, yeah, absolutely. They're, they're not going. They're not going to dump the outgoing world champion from the series. No, I don't. Interesting mm. to see if Greg Hancock doesn't make the top eight. Whether he'll get a pick? Do you think he'll make a top eight? I'm not entirely sure he will, to be honest. I'm sure. I, I would. I, my guess would be that rather than wait for a pick, he might well retire and so, you know, because that would be a well, better uh, way of going. Yeah, I mean, on the, on his day, he's still mm-hmm. capable of you know mixing it with the very best. I, I think probably now his chances of winning another world championship are probably gone. I don't think he's going to be able to do it now because I think there's too many. I think there's several other riders now, the likes of Ty. You know, no, he's not. Smart he's, that, that, who that's stepped the up thing. Again out yeah, there. that's the thing. I don't think it's in him now. To, he's to done win. remarkably well to stay at the top as long as he has, yeah. and to get those champ, world championships yeah. at the age of that, that he that's got right. on as well. That was, you know, how, how many years between the first and second? Fourteen in the, 14. between ninety ninety seven and um, two thousand eleven. Where I mean, that's that's just a ridiculous statistic, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> yeah. What was he doing in between? He could have won it. <laughs> He was well, absolutely, yeah. But I think, uh, I think, like a lot of other riders mm. in that time, he was, you know, unfortunate to be riding in the same era as 
as the great Tony Ricards and, and Jason Crump and Nicky Pedersen as well. So, Do you think that Chris will be given a wild card if he doesn't make top eight this year? Uh, is this Chris Holder? I no, I don't. So. I've seen a few people talking about mm-hmm. possibly Max Frick getting a, a pick if he's in there, but I'm not mm. quite sure he's, he's ready for that level yet. I was surprised Chris it's, Holder got a pick if I'm honest. He's close though, isn't he? He's close. Yeah, he's not far away, but I, I, I would be very... I was surprised Chris Holder got a pick... This season, I'll be rather even more surprised each year. Ashley Sims says, he's talking about Chris Holder still, uh, he wasn't cutting it in the GP before the Darcy incident. But I think that's that's certainly true. But, that's certainly true. But, but people do go up. I mean, Ty yeah. Waffen did add it off year last year, didn't that's he? That's right, yeah. So there was a couple more shouts on there, a little bit higher. No, yeah, we, there was something that I wanted to say. Apparently Sue Jordan is watching. Hello, Sue. So is Brian Ricketts. Oh, that was the one. So, um, Ed, yeah, a- Emma Sutton says she thinks that uh, Magic has a good chance of winning the championship soon. I wouldn't rule him out. Well, I wouldn't rule anybody very, from Poland there. That's, yeah, it, that's, uh, it. that's currently there. I think you've got to say the pick of the polls at the moment is Bart Marsley. Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. he's, he started off poorly, didn't he? But mm. he's got better in the last he's, the last two Grand Prix. I think he's been the best rider. And I think if there was a little bit more... A few more GPs, he, he might possibly still have a chance of catching him. He could still do it, but I think uh, it's uh, it's a tall order now. I think it's more ties to lose than, than, than anything anybody else there. to win. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I, th- I think. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's, a new, there's a new one up, but it's not on there for some reason. Uh, Shameless was rained off at the weekend. Brummies have been the best visiting fans this year, as per usual, says Chris Simpson. Yeah, we do. Take a you know we're good away from home and noisy as well, mm. so we're the noisy neighbours. Mm. Forget about Cradley being the noisy neighbours. We're the noisy neighbours. We're taking well, Cradley. You're the annoying neighbours. Yeah, the annoying neighbours. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Cradley fans. <laughs> no, you're not. You liar. <laughs> um, well, perhaps we that that would be something that we should talk about uh, as well. Is so you got Cradley versus Mildenor. Yeah. Um, in the uh, Cradley Benefit Trophy. Um. Who would you say winning that? I suppose part of the answer is what depends who Craigley picks. Yeah. If they got on the phone to Tyler Wuffington before it, then yeah. uh, <laughs> um, I think if Craigley ride, they'll need to ride better than they did the other week at Birmingham, I think, to beat Mills and all. Cause Mills I, and, I would, I, I would and totally all, agree. Yeah, Mills and all are, are, you know, for me, are the strongest team in the National mm. League. They're, they're, for me, the favourites to win it. I'd be very surprised if they didn't win it. I think they've they've got the beating of anybody over the two leagues. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be, it'll be you know it should be a cracking final. You know, we know there's there's not much love lost between Mills and Alden no, Cradley over yeah. the years as well. So I'm sure no. that Mills and Alden would love nothing more than to put one over Cradley, as as indeed with Cradley on with Mills and Alden as well. So. Uh, Tamo says there won't be enough free fixtures for Cradley to ride at Mama, I, I presume next season. Uh, they're screwed unless they swallow their pride and maybe support home fixtures at Perry Bar. They had an opportunity to do it this year, but the fans won't support it. So unfortunately, it is of their own making to a certain degree. Well, if if there is a a one big lead next year in Birmingham, really, there won't be enough there won't gaps, be enough Birmingham, gaps either. in Birmingham either. Yeah, exactly. Um, if Birmingham, if there, if it does get to the stage where Birmingham do move up into a, a one big league scenario, or I don't see, I don't see. If there is a one big league, I don't see us moving up. Not yet. That's too much of a risk, isn't it? Yeah. For it's, well, for a new promotion, mm, it definitely. That's is. too much of a risk. Um, and if there is one big league, we then we, we've automatically moved up into the second tier. Yeah. In a way. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I don't see us doing that to be honest. So the, that that would mean that there would be uh, fixtures available at, at Perry Bar. The first time watch our listener Emma Madison Sutton wants to know: Do you go to Cardiff each year? I know that you. you I do. 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 I've never been. I nearly got, nearly went there this year, but circumstances meant I couldn't. So I'm hoping to go next year. It's it's surprisingly affordable, isn't it? The 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 tickets. My tickets are nineteen pounds, which is for a a national stadium is is very very good value. Nineteen pound. Some some first sorry some Premiership teams. Charged. Premier League team, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And where, yeah. were you, where were you sitting for that? I was in the third. I was in the middle tier. Middle tier. But, that's, uh, right. that's pretty good. That's fair. Yeah, good, it? good seats. Good seats. So, yeah. I mean, you don't get a you don't get a bad view unless you're in the bottom tier. When we, I mean, we were in the bottom tier at Cardiff the one year, mm. about two thousand two, I think. 
mm. and you couldn't really see the other side of the track very well at all. But right. when you're in the middle tier or the top tier, then you've got a tremendous view. Yeah. Awesome. And the fact that you're looking really down yeah. on the track as well. I understand so. that the prices are hiked tremendously once you get into Cardiff, though, as far as accommodation and so on. Oh, they Is don't. They, they they make it the most of it. The, uh, mm. the people there. There's so no, it's probably yeah. a, a get in and get out event yeah. if you can. Around, I noticed as well that a round of drinks is rather expensive in Cardiff. Yeah. Stadium as well. So but, uh, you're saying you bought one? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I bought three. So. Really? Yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay. Has that ever been? I haven't got over it yet, sir. So. I think a round of applause for that. Been, yeah. That must have been a hard <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got over it yet, sir. So. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of the people you brought the drink for. <laughs> I think they haven't drunk it because I can't quite believe it. But anyway, I saw my brother go. slump as he fell over the seat when I left him and went off to buy him a drink. Thomas says Holder got a pick because he's a monster boy. That's, uh, he's under the monster badge, isn't he? Yeah, so that's certainly. The legend, isn't it? You know, people. Yeah. Are, I, I've no idea. Whether I think this they're going to be true. too. I think. I mean, obviously, they're the main backers, and their backing is obviously huge for Speedway. But mm. I do think that the uh, the monster personnel maybe get a little bit too involved. I know that uh, right. they're not. They're not exactly friends with Nicky Pedersen, although I don't think many people in the pits are. <laughs> <laughs> must must have been the lowest lowest key from a podium of a Grand Prix ever, because none of them were really talking to each other, to be honest. So, <laughs> but uh, interesting. Friend of the show, Leon Flint. He Leon? said, it's been a while, boys. It has been a while. Oh, yeah. Leon, mate, we're looking forward to seeing you back on that bike tomorrow. I hope, uh, yeah, I hope you haven't come back too soon. Um, I hope it's all holding up. Let us know. How, how are you feeling, mate? How are you feeling? And a message from Jack says, Jack Wright, he says, it would be a real shame if whatever happens with the current top two, top two leagues scupper or ham, hamstrings the National League. It's a nice competitive league with decent racing and affordable admission charges. Yes, there is that, I suppose. Yeah, I didn't understand all of that, but... Um, no, yeah. I, well, I think what he's trying to say is it would be a shame to break up the National League. In Absolutely. Well, it would be breaking up I'd, the National League, but it would yeah. be cha- maybe changing things around in the National League, which probably don't need to be changed. Well, no. the, the good thing about the National League is it has, by, by and large, stayed pretty stable, hasn't it? It has, yeah. Mm. It's affordable. It's, mm. I think, as I said, I think I've said before, a lot of people think that it's just riders who just struggle to get round the track. But there's there's some quality rods in that division now. Yeah, there's some excellent, some excellent racing. I well, mean, the the, crowd, the Birmingham crowd meeting a few weeks ago was was an oh, fantastic meeting. meeting, and the one before it was pretty good. I can't even remember who Mildenau, that was. Yeah. Was it Mildenau? Yeah. What, was was it, it, what was the crowd like last night? Uh, at Cradley, I, I thought it. It was a bit poor, to be honest. I, really? I was expecting it to be a bigger crowd, if I'm yeah. honest. Um, mm. So, you know, I mean, that that that's the problem they've got. You know, they're doing half a season. People are not supporting it, are they? And, you know, it, 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 wonder it, whether maybe the, the novelty's worn off of it a little bit now. I think when Crowley first went into the National League in 2010, a lot of them just hoped it was going to be just for a couple of years. And yeah, they, they saw it. This track. was a... Yeah, exactly. That's the idea exactly. was as soon as they get the track, they'd, they'd move up because they'd, they'd definitely be able to sustain speedway at a higher level. If I they had think. Their own venue. I think where it went wrong for them, uh, and this might sound silly, but I just think it was like a, it's a signal. The reason that they they started under the Dudley Heathens banner, they stated we're not going to call ourselves Cradley until we've got our own track. Yeah. So that's a signal, isn't it? When they then changed mm, it to Cradley, Cradley well, yeah. we're not going to get our own track, and. Mm. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think, the, you know, they've supported it because it's, it's it was like a springboard. We're going to really put our names on the map and they're going to realise what they're missing and the council. Yeah. Got, yeah. But none of that's happened, has it? Well, um, as Birmingham fans know, the longer you're away, the harder it is to get. I mean, it's 23 years now since Dudley were closed. Mm. I mean, it's a long It's a, it's a long, long time. Long, similar long, long sort of time. time as we. There's a whole generation first. of Crowley fans who've never known mm. Crowley with their own track. So. Cradley have got this wonderful advantage that if they could get themselves a track in the Dudley Cradley vicinity, that they've got no competition. There's no cricket team. There's no football team. Yeah. You know, there's you know they haven't got. I mean, I don't know even sure that they've even got a, a leisure centre, have they? <laughs> not really, no. There's not, there's not really much to do in Dudley, to be honest. You know, so as far as sports, as far as sports. <laughs> I was going to say something naughty, then I just <laughs> no, stopped no. myself. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, so as far as sports are concerned, they've got a monopoly, they can get it in. So they've got such a big advantage I over... I think that's Paul's you know, advantage, isn't it, though? Mm, yeah, exactly. I know yeah. Bournemouth are in the Premier League now, but I mean, for a, for a long period of time, Paul didn't have a lot, so... Uh, we got a message for Leon Flint. I think it was pro- probably meant to be spe- to be sung. I don't know. It says Leon Flint, Leon Flint, Leon Flint, Leon, Leon Flint. Come on, mate, smash it tomorrow. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was probably, probably in the C major. But, yeah. Either that or the keyboard got stuck. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> or too many sherbets. Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> uh, Paul Lavin says, oh, "I thought there was a bigger crowd last night than the Wolves match against Bellevue." Well, I can't comment on that because I wasn't at the Wolves match against Bellevue. What was the crowd like here? Decent. I mean, Bellevue always bring a, mm-hmm. a load down, to be fair. They always travel well, especially if there's going to be an away win. So. Well, where we were standing, which is on the first bend, it looked a lot sparser than, nor- than normal. And then I, I was expecting a really big crowd. Given well, the- to be honest, when, when I went to watch the Brummies there last season, I was expecting a much bigger crowd than the one... That we're, that we're at because mm. when I'm there for the Wolves meeting because I stand on the other side of the I stand on the uh, exit of the last bend and right. it's usually quite well populated I went to that Crowdy Birmingham match last season and me and my dad were the only two people standing in right. that block which was it's probably because you and your dad were there anyway <laughs> well <laughs> was, which was quite which was quite astonishing yeah. I didn't think I didn't think that at the time because well the Brummie, the Brummies fans tend to um, congregate on the first bend so yeah. whether that's had something to do with that I don't know but you will have heard us mm. when we was there I'm sure yeah. Yeah. right so we uh, we ought to talk about meetings coming up so Birmingham versus Buxton tomorrow I haven't actually looked at the Buxton lineup um, I mean obviously they've got Ben Morley yeah um, who. It was a little bit disappointing yesterday, I, th- yeah, I thought. There was a few people. I, I thought Jason Edwards was very disappointing. Well, I um, thought he rode very well. He at, rode uh, very well at Perry Bar, yeah, he did. But he was, Perry Bar, Mama Green's obviously a slightly different track to Perry Bar. Yeah. So. And I suppose, you know, it, that you look at the quality of the riders, that was there. Um, yeah, Ben Morley came out and won, uh, won his first heat and then didn't really... And Connor Coles, who's the only rider who's got a higher average than... Tom Bacon looked like looked like a again. It's that track, I guess, but he didn't ride it very well at all. Mm. Yeah. So, but anyway, so tomorrow's meeting. I think Ben Morley is the only one that they've got that can trouble our top. Who's he getting for? Now? He's, he's rides. Isn't he? He rides for Buxton, doesn't he? No, he doesn't. Doesn't yeah, I he? Think, I think you mean. Um, what's his name? They've got a good. For, Ben Wilson, I think you. Ben mean. Wilson, I don't know. Yeah, it is Ben Wilson. I haven't. I, 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 I come straight from work, so I haven't had the chance to look at the teams yet. In fact, if you want to put the website up, you could put the teams up for us, please, Webby. Yeah, when you've yeah. finished taking a photo of yourself. <laughs> no, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get the staff. Um, well, so we've got we, we haven't done the competition. Oh gosh, well, yes, no, gosh, quick. Yeah, yeah, we need to get the competition. Just, just Easy win me. for Birmingham tomorrow. That's what I was trying to say. There you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I have. A, I've got it all prepared. Righty ho. We should have a fanfare for this, you know. No, that was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> that was just worse than ter- terrible. That was embarrassing. And the winner for our T-shirt this week is... Barbara Canova. Barbara Canova. I think it's Kavanagh. 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 Okay, Barbara Canova. Cavanagh. Yeah, okay, so Barbara, print them out. <laughs> <laughs> so Barbara, if you want to get yourself uh, in touch with Webby via the usual channels on the Facebook or email us or yeah, just message the page. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Um, the page well. we'll get in touch with you and we'll get that off to you ASAP. Yeah. So fantastic. And Wendy Jane Bar- Barnett has just said, don't forget to pull my name out for the T-shirt tonight. Sorry, oh, sorry, we're sorry, we didn't sorry see, we, we didn't see that until afterwards, did yeah. we? So, <laughs> uh, that, that, that's that's a real shame. Uh, try again next week, Wendy. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's what happens if you keep doing those shares uh, coming along. We'll shove you in our. It's not a hat, is it? It's a trophy. It's a trophy. That's all right, yeah. yeah. And uh, there you go. We'll Pretty get that too. Well, it's all the names that were in it. That's what it is. <laughs> Uh, it's Connor Mountain, It's Connor Mountain, not, not Coles, and Ben Wilson, not Morley. I'm sure you do it on purpose, GA. Yeah. I do do it on purpose, and if I, if I can get away with it for, for saying I do it on purpose, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I think that's I literally, because you're nearly a pension. I literally, yeah. yeah, I literally 
I'd come straight from work tonight and didn't have a chance to sort of mm. bone up on this stuff, so um, which I, I would normally do. So really I do apologise. Yeah, really I get my Buxtons and my Mildenors and my <laughs> Stokes all mixed up. I do. Uh, have have uh, Wolverhampton? Yeah, we're in action on Monday against Swindon. Oh, that'll be tasty. So that should be a tasty yeah. uh, meeting. A meeting that we probably need to win, really, if we're going to keep our chances of mm-hmm. getting into the um, top four. And then, of course, we've got the double header on next Wednesday against Kingsley. We're running at Kingsley in the A meeting, and then straight after that, the B meeting. So that's going to be. You're riding goal. against them twice? Yeah, on the same night. Has that ever happened before? It happened last year. It was, it? it was a farce last year, so I don't know what's going to happen this time. So. <sighs> And then we've got the two uh, bank holiday Monday meetings uh, against Bellevue. We go there in the morning and then they come back to Monmouth Green in the evening. So I should be uh, going to the uh, National Stadium, Stadium on Monday morning and I always enjoy going there. Yes, so, and I, I mean, I've never been, but I mean... Definitely worth going Looking to. at it, it just it always seems to produce great racing. Yeah. There just seems to be so many lines on, on, on the thing. It's like you get in front and then you go, where do I ride now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Um, I've got a suggestion, by the way. This is something I thought of last night, and it might not be new, I don't know. But the thing about the Golden Hammer is that it's done over the, the old format. Yeah. No finals. You know, just whoever is, scores the most points on the night, if you, if you draw, you get a runoff. Yeah. Um, and I've always think that's a purer way of doing it. But the thing that, that's a, the problem with it is, which happened last night, Heat 18 came. We know who won it. Which was effectively a final. Which was effectively a final. Well, it was last night. Um, And then um, there was two more races after it, which were a bit of a damp squib, really. So my suggestion would be, you say, is that the last four heats are there, but you don't put the number 17, 18, 19 and 20 on them. Yeah. That uh, You do the last lot and then you have a look and whichever's the most important heat you put at the last. So like last night, they would have put Heat 18 in Heat 20. Still would have been exactly the same, the same gates and the same everything, but the referee or, or whoever has the opportunity to say, right, first Heat is going to be Heat 20, second Heat is... Do, do you understand what, yeah. what, what I'm saying? Might be, might be a bit more complicated if there's more than two riders still in the running, to be fair. But Yeah, but then you put those two, yeah. well, that, that, the, the, that one's involved in those at the end. Yeah. You know, it's much more chance that, uh, uh, of, a, of a climax to the meeting. It's, it's always been a tr- mm. usually a final to, in the, the gold medal, I think, so. Yes? Right. Oh, can I interject? Yeah, we've got uh, yeah, some... transfer, transfer windows. Uh, should we have them being able to change four, ri- four riders in a team? I think is crazy. Riders have no job security, said Alan Atherton. Who's changed four riders in a team? Leicester. Uh, Leicester, right. And they've actually got worse since they did it, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> should riders have job security, first of all, is the first question. I'm not sure that they should have job security. That's how sport works, isn't it? That's it. If you don't perform, then you know, if a bit of a better repl- possibility of a replacement comes along, then you're out. So. It, it, it's, I mean, it, it's slightly more difficult for speedway riders over, say, footballers, Apart from the fact that footballers earn a lot of money anyway, yeah. um, because footballers are self-employed as such, are they? They they they, they belong to a team. Well, they're not paid on performance, are they? Mm. If you don't perform as a spooder, you don't get yeah. paid, you don't get. So paid that, really there important. is there is a difference in that. So, mm. um, but no, uh, should trans- transfer windows should we have them? It works in football, but football haven't got the injury problems that Speedway has. I mean, you just can't compare this to to any other sport. Don't like transfer windows in football at all. No, so. well, but I mean, but most people don't. So no. I don't think that would be a good idea. There was another um, uh, uh, post there that I wanted to yeah, yeah, yeah to have a look at. Uh, um, what chance Tom Bacon at Wolves next year seems to like Monmore? Andy Phillips is that the Andy Phillips that rifle Wolves by any chance? Or? Well, it was Alan Phillips. Oh dear me! That went over your head, then, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I was busy reading something. So, yeah. um, oh, I can guess what I can guess what he said. there to be fair. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I, I think from Wall's point of view, it's a no-brainer. You've got a rider that is going to score points at reserve. He's yeah. not, possibly not going to be the best rider at reserve, although he might be. He might be in a couple of years. Yeah. I think so. Um, 
He's going to score points. He likes the Monmore track, which is always a bonus. Yeah. Um, and he'll probably bring a few Bromley supporters along with yeah. him as well. I just think I think with with Tom. I mean, we've we've said this before. I mean, the the big thing that's always impressed me with Tom, especially when I've interviewed him for Rear and his how professional he is, and he's probably his set up around him. And that's one thing that will be a bonus with with Chris Van Stratton. He does like a professional rider, mm. and I know that him and Peter Adams have both been extremely impressed with the. Uh, with Tom Baker and yeah. the two guest appearances. He's What's had not with to Wolves. be impressed? Absolutely. Mm. You know, he's I, done. I, I think it's a no brainer yeah. for them. I, really I think do. the last. This season, he's stepped up a gear, hasn't he, really? Oh. He, was making, he was making good strides last season. But I remember at the beginning of the season, he was making good strides at the season, yeah. but the one criticism for, for Tom has always been that he can't pass, but he's added that to his. Uh, his repertoire this year. He's and, probably and doing good, actually, to miss a few gates so that. Yeah. He's had to, uh, <laughs> But he has added that to his repertoire this this year. Um, a lot of people said at the beginning of this season when we signed him, it was a, a sort of an oh no moment because they, they people when we signed Tom realised that we wasn't going to sign JPB and most yeah. people would have preferred to have JPB. Yeah, I have to be honest. Although I've keep showing how rubbish I am at, at, at understanding this sport of speedway on this on this program, I got that one right. Because I was pleased that we signed Tom Bacon mm. because of his professionalism, because of the way he, you know, I, I like JPB. Don't get me wrong, exciting rider and everything, but yeah. but you need a Tom Bacon in your team. You just you do. Um, okay, we've got a few and, questions. We've got three minutes left. Yep. So yeah. Somebody said my idea was a good idea. By the way, I just thought I'd put that out there. Yeah, we got, did, we, you did pay him to say that. Didn't yeah, you? I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was that your other uh, Facebook account that you posted yeah. on. <laughs> One of my thirty. Is it Jack Wright Harris. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, what was you going to say anyway? I've got a few questions. You've gone through the good, good idea, but <clears throat> Alan Athens come back. So I have a squad system, maybe eight or nine riders per squad team. On with you, on there, mate. It would be great, wouldn't I it? It would be the ideal go. thing to happen. Mm. But I, it doesn't. I don't see how it necessarily mm. works as, in speed. Mm. A, a rider doesn't. Earn money unless he's riding. That's right. And if he's not riding, then and if he's not riding, un- unless you're, you're going to say, well, you pay them a retainer, but we can't speedway. Just can't. No, they can't pay they that can't sort of money. They, they can't they afford that. They can pay so for being in the squad. it would be great, but we need a few more. Then it would work. We had a few more people coming through the gates. I was watching a brilliant movie the other day um, that somebody that your your dad gave me actually a DVD, and it, and it showed the Brummies making their way to an away meeting, and all the bikes were put on this truck. Because they all the bikes belong to the club, yeah, and yeah. they took them because the riders belong to the club, that's and that's how, how it used to be. And and I don't know how they went from that to the way it is now, but that might have been where it went wrong. I think that's a good you know? idea. So anyway, really yeah. uh, good luck to Aaron Butcher because he's signed Stoke today in place of Joe Alcock. That's going to yeah. be interesting when he comes back next week. Yes. Um. See. Yeah. We'll we'll find out whether we've. Uh, did we make right decisions? I think we did make right decisions, to be fair. But, yeah, I um, think so. But yeah, that'll be interesting to see that. Uh, we got any more on there? I think that's because we're running we're out of time. To, to, uh, uh, so I, I can get a final where Olsen and Lee, but I can't see the top of that question there. So let's have a quick look. Uh, I, okay. Oh, that's talking about my idea. So we'll, yeah. But we'll, yeah, great idea. Wasn't there a? Oh, he's disappeared again. He's I, I did, they actually wrote. Yeah. Diff- How dare they? Uh, Halifax have a video like the one I was talking about, by the way. Too much swapping and changing with riders becoming a cattle market. But, okay, but the problem with that is that we as fans demand it. We've been talking, uh, there's been a lot of people demand, there's been a lot of demand at at, at, at Birmingham. Change the reserves, change the reserves. This rider's not performing. I bet it was happening at at Wolverhampton with uh, the rider that's just been replaced. I can't remember his name. Cameron Heaps. Um, You know... You can't blame the, the. We say that they don't do what we want, and then when when they do we do what we want, they say mm. we say well we shouldn't be able to do it. It's I don't know what the answer is. Mm. Shall we leave it there? I, I don't know what the answer is. Before you go off on <laughs> yeah. your tangents again. Yes. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Please remember we won't be here next week, but we will be here the following week. Um, good luck to Wolverhampton against Swindon next week. Good luck to Birmingham. Good luck to everybody's teams. And please, no more injuries. Good night. Good night. Good night.